Azure Public Endpoints and Azure Private Endpoints are two distinct networking concepts in Microsoft Azure that serve different purposes. And understanding the difference between them is crucial for designing the appropriate network architecture for your next big Azure application. So in this video, we will understand the endpoint concept which is elementary in designing any cloud network. And as a bonus, I will also explain Azure Service Endpoints and Azure Private Links. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard and I welcome you all to our free learning series on Azure Fundamentals. And for all our viewers including the newcomers, please note that this is our section 2.2.6 under the parent section section 2 holding 35 to 40 percent in AZ 900 exam and you can observe the same on this screenshot directly from Microsoft Azure Fundamentals clearly marking this section and its overall weightage in the exam. And friends in the description box I have also shared the link for the Microsoft website and a free PDF link with Azure Fundamentals syllabus fully synced with Microsoft Azure and our video series. So please go ahead and get your own free PDF copy. Now before we move any further and dive into the details of different types of endpoints, I think it makes perfect sense that we first understand what exactly is an endpoint. So friends, endpoint is any device that connects to a computer network. So whenever you connect to a network or let's say a resource on a network, you need an endpoint. And these endpoints can be public or private that we will just discuss in a minute. For now, let's say that you have a virtual machine on an Azure virtual network. Now to connect to this virtual machine or in fact this network, you need an endpoint. Similarly, other resources such as Azure Database, Azure Storage and even individual files in Azure storage have an endpoint. Okay, so even if I cannot see you, I know that some of you might still have some doubts here. So no problems. Let's take one more real Azure example. And now my friends on your screen, you can notice a screenshot from Azure storage. Here you can notice that we have two JSON files. You can also notice other attributes, for example, modified date, access tier, which is hot. Then you can also notice the blob type, which is blob blob and other information is also given. Now here on this area on the right hand side, you can see these three dots. When you click on these three dots, you will come up with this screen. So here my friends, when you click these three dots, this kind of web page will open. You can observe other properties of this file. Also, you can observe this property, which is called URL. And this URL is nothing but the public endpoint. And if you have this URL or you can share also this URL with anyone and of course with proper access if they have then you can open this file. So basically this is a public endpoint for any file in Azure storage. So if you have the URL of any file it could be JSON file, it could be TXT, Excel, picture files, any files in case you have the URL and you paste this URL in your browsers, you will be able to access this file. And of course, my friend, to keep the example simple, we are not considering any access on this file. Just understand that in case you want to access any file in Azure storage, in that case, you will need a URL, which is nothing but a public endpoint. So what this example actually tells you that in case you want to access any file or virtual machine or let's say any public IP, in that case you will always need a public endpoint. So this is the importance of public and private endpoint. Let's move to our presentation to understand a little bit more. Now let's take a step forward and understand the two major type of endpoints and friends, you can also take a small step in helping others to learn these Microsoft Azure concepts by liking the video so that it reaches all the Azure enthusiasts just like you. And of course, you can also share these videos on your social media platforms to spread the knowledge. So as I mentioned earlier as well, there are two types of Azure endpoints. The first one is private endpoint and the second one is public endpoint. Now to better understand both these types of endpoints, I want to quickly introduce you to a new concept which is called public IP and private IP. We would need to understand these IPs to better understand both these endpoints. Now let's assume that we have our company's website which is hosted over the internet and let's say that we have hosted this website on Azure virtual machine using IIS server. Now to make this website accessible over the internet or you can say for the general public, 
we would need a public ip and then also check this side of the image so here we can see that we have our own private network or private ip now you might be thinking why we would need a private ip we already have this public ip which makes our website accessible over the internet so why this private ip is even needed so let me clarify this so we have our website which is hosted using public ip why we would need public ip well, because we want to expose our website to the general public. But then on the other hand, maybe we have our database or maybe some other servers, mobile devices. It could be anything. But the important point is that we do not want to expose all these servers or all these resources to the entire external world. That's why we keep some of the resources under the private IP while the resources that we want to expose to the general public that are exposed using public ip now let me very quickly give you some more features of public ip and private ip so that you can understand them better so here you can read the public ip address is a unique ip address assigned to your network router by your internet service provider on the other hand the private ip address is a unique address that your network router assigns to your device and both these concepts you can very well visualize on this image here you can see this is the public ip which is assigned to you by your network service provider while on the other hand these all are private ip so they are private to you internal no one can access keeping your azure components and services safe and secure and then as i already mentioned that public ip can be directly accessed over the internet while on the other hand the private ips they are used within the private network to connect securely to the other devices and finally most important point that public ips are paid so you have to pay for the public ips in microsoft azure while on the other hand private ips are absolutely free so until now we have understood the basics what exactly is an endpoint what is public ip and what is private ip it is now time that we talk about the private and public endpoints so let's start with reading the definitions of private and public endpoints so friends azure private endpoints provide a secure and private access to azure resources within a virtual network by mapping the endpoints to a private ip address these endpoints are typically used when you want to access an azure resource such as an azure storage account that we just saw or Azure SQL database from within your VNet without exposing the resource to the public internet. On the other hand, the Azure public endpoint refers to a network interface or IP address that is publicly accessible over the internet. It allows users from anywhere to access services hosted in Azure, such as virtual machine, web applications, or APIs. Public endpoints are typically used for the scenarios where the services needs to be accessible to a wide range of users, just like your website. Now, let me simplify things even further for you. So here you can read that Azure private endpoints are used when you want to establish a connection or communication between the resources within your own virtual network or the subnet. And on the flip side, Azure public endpoints are used to open communication over the public internet. So hopefully you understood the gist of public and private endpoints. Now let's talk about the key features of Azure private endpoints. And the very first key feature for Azure private endpoints, well, it can be none other than private access. So private endpoints enables you to access Azure services privately within your VNet and this eliminates the need to traverse through the public internet. And the second key feature is secure connectivity. So private endpoints use Azure Backbone Network ensuring secure and reliable communication between your VNet and the Azure resources. And on number three, we have network isolation. So by connecting privately to the resource, you can enforce network isolation and enhance security by restricting access to the resource from within the VNet. And then we have service integration. Private endpoints seamlessly integrate with Azure services, allowing you to access them securely over private connections. Now, let me give you some use cases for Azure private endpoints for better understanding. The very first use case is secure access. As we just read, whenever you want to have secure access to the Azure resources, such as Azure Storage Account, Azure SQL database, Azure Cosmos DB or Azure App Services. In that case, you should use Azure private endpoints. And the second use case is enforcing stricter security controls by limiting access to the Azure services from within the private network. 
Now let's check out some of the key features of Azure Public Endpoints. The first one is Internet Connectivity. So Public Endpoints provides connectivity to the resources over the internet, enabling access from anywhere. Then secondly, we have Load Balancing and Traffic Distribution. So Public Endpoints can be integrated with Azure Load Balancer to distribute traffic across multiple instances of a resource for high availability and scalability. And then on the third one, we have firewall and network security groups. So public endpoints can be secured using network security groups or also known as NSG and Azure Firewall to control inbound and outbound traffic. Now, similar to the use cases that we saw for the Azure private endpoints, let's see some use cases for the Azure public endpoints as well. Now, the most prominent use case for Azure public endpoints is exposing services such as Azure Virtual Machines or Azure Kubernetes Service Clusters to the public internet for remote management and access. So friends, in a quick summary, Azure private endpoints provide a secure and private access to the Azure resources from within a virtual network. While on the other hand, the Azure public endpoints enable public access to the resources over the internet and the choice between them, well, it actually depends on your specific requirements, security considerations and the level of accessibility that you want on your Azure resources. So friends, there is one more term that you will hear a lot with public and private endpoints, which makes actually a lot of people confused and that is service endpoint. And of course, this is the bonus learning section for today. We have already discussed private endpoints, which makes it possible for the virtual network assets to privately connect to each other as if they were the part of same network. And this essentially integrates all the assets, Azure services or Azure components in one VNet routing traffic over Microsoft Azure backbone rather than the open internet. But on the other hand, the service endpoint enables virtual network resources to connect to an Azure service public endpoint using private IP addresses extending the virtual network's identity to the target resource. And this actually indicates that the traffic is routed through the Azure backbone network rather than the internet to reach Azure services. So a service endpoint remains a publicly routable IP address. Now friends, before I close this session for today, I want to quickly talk about what is Azure Private Link. And this will give you a 360 degree of understanding so that you can bind all this information really good when you're working on Microsoft Azure. So this is the documentation on what is Azure Private Link. Let's read it out. It says that Azure Private Links enables you to access Azure PaaS services, for example, Azure Storage and Azure SQL Database. A very important point, my friends here, Azure Storage and Azure SQL Database both come in PaaS services because there will be questions in AZ-900. Anyways, it says to access Azure PaaS services and Azure hosted customer owned partner services over private endpoints in your virtual network. Traffic between your virtual network and the service travels the Microsoft Backbone network, exposing your service to public internet is no longer necessary. And it's very important that you note that Azure Private Link is now generally available both private endpoints and private link service are generally available. The link for this documentation is right there in the description box in case you want to read it more. So friends, we have covered a lot of ground today. So let's summarize. We started the session with understanding what is an endpoint. I gave you some examples here to better understand. Secondly, we understood what is public IP and private IP. The third topic we covered, which was the prime focus for today, was public and private endpoints, their key differences, key features and use cases for each of them. And then in the bonus section, we covered service endpoints as the topic number four. And finally, topic number five for today's session was Azure Private Links. And in case, my friends, you are really interested to explore all these concepts more, you can find some documentation from Microsoft. All the links are given in the description box, including the best practice page and one more page, which is the FAQ page on Azure Private Link, where you can also learn a lot about this concept in an easy to understand question and answer format. So if you felt this was a good learning session, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, very important because this makes sure that you get timely notifications of all our power pack video. And what is the next topic that we are going to cover? Well, we are going to cover in the next video, describe Azure management and governance, which holds 30 to 35% in AZ-900. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.